Many patients with rheumatoid arthritis tend to avoid exercise because they fear it might damage their joints or worsen their pain. But exercise is one of the critical steps in a successful treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. In this video, I will discuss who should exercise, when to exercise, where to exercise, and my colleague, Dr. Melissa Kale, will show you the best 10 exercises for rheumatoid arthritis. Let's begin. Rheumatologistoncall.com Exercise has been associated with excellent health and for a good reason. Exercise maintains your body strength and improves mood, reduces the risk of developing chronic diseases, and helps decrease the pain. Patients with rheumatoid arthritis fight pain every day, and exercise is shown to reduce inflammation, maintain your joints flexibility, decrease the bone loss, and decrease the pain feeling. This pain dampering response occurs even after one round of exercise and increases when training is done consistently. As such, Exercise should be introduced early as an essential part of treating patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Who should exercise? Everyone. Long-term studies have shown that even people with rheumatoid arthritis can benefit from moderate intensity exercises. What I recommend to my patients is to find the right time of the day and make it as a routine. For patients that experience a lot of morning stiffness, I would recommend starting the day with gentle stretching exercises. As you start feeling better and your disease is better controlled, you can incorporate other types of exercises. If you feel exhausted, schedule just short exercise intervals and split them through the day. In my online course, From Pain to Freedom, I introduce patients with rheumatoid arthritis to the rheumatoid arthritis healing formula that includes specific nutrient-based strategies to reduce the inflammation along with an exercise program specifically designed for rheumatoid arthritis patients that is tailored to their needs. Where to exercise? Now, I believe the best place to exercise is where you feel good about exercising, either your home or in a class. It is better to have guidance, and here we offer you the help of Dr. Melissa Kale that will teach you in a bit the best 10 exercises for rheumatoid arthritis. I always recommend aquatic therapy and pool-based exercises to my rheumatoid arthritis patients, especially in the warm water. Exercise in the pool has less stress on your joints, as water takes away the pressure from your body to your joints. Look up a local pool or an arthritis program that could be available in your area. What are the best exercises for rheumatoid arthritis? You have to know there is no one fits all answer. The best exercise program is individualized and combines strength training, aerobic exercise, and as I said, aquatic therapy. Before you start an exercise program, make sure you choose an exercise that is fun and convenient. You make realistic short and long-term goals, and you will identify what are the obstacles that are likely to keep you away from exercise schedule and plan to deal with them. You may find a friend or a family member to exercise with you, and you should keep an exercise log or a chart to see your progress and reward yourself when you have achieved your goals. Now, let me introduce you to Dr. Melissa Kale, a licensed physical therapist and the founder of Chimera Health that will show you the 10 best exercises for rheumatoid arthritis. 
Hello, my name is Dr. Melissa Kale. I'm a physical therapist and Pilates instructor. In this video, we're going to do 10 simple exercises for rheumatoid arthritis. So we're going to get your entire body moving to help reduce pain and stiffness. And we're going to use mostly seated exercises in a chair, a little bit of standing. And the only other prop that we're going to use is a loop exercise band, which if you do not have, you're welcome to use your hands for resistance when we get to that. So very low equipment, simple movements that you can use to get your body moving and get started in the day or at any point you're just generally feeling stiff and sore. So we're going to start in sitting and what you're going to want to do is have your feet flat on the ground, maybe scoot forward on your chair so that you can notice the weight of your feet on the floor, feel the contact of all 10 toes. And then as you inhale, we're gonna bring the shoulders up by the ears, open the chest, bring the shoulder blades back into some easy shoulder rolls. Inhale as we come up, exhale as you come down and around. Your hands, you can experiment with what feels best. You can either let them rest on your legs, you can bring them together. You could alternatively make the movement a little bigger by letting the elbows come out away from the body. Feel free to play with that just a bit, but just get some gentle movement here into those shoulders, coordinating with your breath. Let's try about two more. Inhale as you come up. Exhale as we come around. We're gonna see if we can sit up really tall so that we have a neutral spine position, your tailbone poking out behind you just a little bit. Very nice. And then on the next one, we're gonna bring your palms down, seated cat cow. So on your inhale, we're gonna open the chest, look up toward the sky, creating a little bit of an arch in your back and full breath in, let your ribs expand and then exhale into cat, tucking the chin down, rounding your spine like you're trying to reach your vertebrae toward the back of the chair. So inhale to open up the chest. Gently look up if that's comfortable for your neck or option to just continue looking forward and just move through the mid back, low back. Exhale, round. Inhale as we open. My hands are just resting here. I'm not pushing with my arms. Exhale to round. And then continue forward and back into cat cow or option here to move this into a circle. So instead of going straight forward, I'm going to lean my ribs to the right, circle around, opening up into my cow, lean it to the left, circle it around. Pelvis stays steady. So I'm sitting into my sitting bones, circling and scooping the rib cage up and around like we're scooping out a bowl with a with the spatula and then when you come to the front we'll reverse the direction of your circle exhale through the rounding part of it inhale as we open the chest really nice mobility work for the entire low back the rib cage getting some work of your core muscles your obliques on the side of the waist Let's try one more time in this direction. Allow your neck to get involved a little bit if that feels good. And then once we come back to the center, we'll refine your neutral position, weight even on both sitting bones, a little bit of our tilt forward. So we have your tailbones reaching behind you. Then we're gonna rotate right hand to left knee, spiraling the ribs directly on top of the pelvis. So as you twist, you're not gonna lean back or lean to the side. You have a string attached to the top of your head, imagine, and your spiral right on that center axis of that string. Unwind, left hand to right knee, keeping the chest open, almost leaning forward a bit to avoid leaning backwards as you rotate. Let the ribs expand in all directions. And then we'll unwind right hand to left knee. This time option to reach back, extend your arm toward the wall behind you, the window behind you. Add a little bit of a circle of the wrist. Circle the wrist the other way. And then unwind left hand to right knee. Continue here. If you want to add the circle with your arm down, that's fine. Or reach the arm way back. Add a circle of the wrist. One direction. Left foot still glued to the ground. Crown of the head reaching to the sky. Circle the wrist the other way. Getting some of that synovial fluid moving within all those little joints in the wrist. Nice, then we're gonna come back to the center, flip the palms up straight ahead in front of you, reaching forward, our option to keep the elbows in, and we're gonna wave the fingers. Pinky finger comes towards palm first, then ring finger, middle finger, first finger, thumb, bring the hands in toward your chest, back of the hands together as you reach forward, maybe even touch the back 
pinky side of your fingers to each other. Bring the hands back in, wave them back out, reaching forward. Wave the pinky finger in first, one finger at a time, reach it ahead, and then slowly come back. We're gonna imagine like the air is thick. We have to put a little bit of effort to move through it. Palms come up to the sky. Two more, pinky finger first, roll it through, back of the hands, stretch ahead, sit up nice and tall, hands come in, reach the hands up. And one more time, pinky finger comes in, we make a bit of a fist, back of the knuckles come together, spiral through, reaching the back of the hands towards each other, rotate, and palms finish up nice and ahead. Good. Then when you let your hands down, we're going to go ahead and grab your loop band if you've got it. Feet flat on the ground, maybe scoot forward a little bit more if you're not already, keeping that neutral spine and gently press out against the band. So both knees, equal effort. See if you can do that without rounding in your back. So keeping the chest lifted, you can even do hands on pelvis if that helps you. Continue to hold for another breath. Upper part of the neck, chest and neck nice and relaxed and let the knees come back in. I think we're gonna press out. For a little more challenge, you can hold the hands in front of you. In a prayer, make a fist. Interlace your fingers so you're using your core for a little bit of work here for balance. Slowly come back. It doesn't have to be a big movement. It's just enough. We'll press out. Just enough to get a little activity in those deep rotators in your hip. Super important muscles for preventing knee pain, preventing hip pain, preventing low back pain. Very important stabilizers for the entire, basically lower half of the body. Press out again. Chest lifted, neutral spine. Feel all 10 toes on the ground. Take one more breath as we come out of that. Good. And then we're going to let the band, shimmy that band down. Pick up the left knee. You can use your hands on the front of the back of the knee, bringing knee to chest. A little bit of a hip stretch there. And then option two, if you're able to, bring your ankle onto the knee. If that's a little too much, you can go ahead and continue with just knee to chest. If we've got ankle to knee, we're going to hinge forward just a little bit so you feel a little stretch in the back of the hip. Come back up nice and tall. Left ankle is going to put a little bit of effort into the knee so the hips are not completely relaxed. We've got a little bit of muscle activity there while we're lengthening them. And then one more time, ankle presses gently to the knee, heart reaches forward nice and long. And then we'll unwind from that and try the other side. Either knee comes up to chest. If we're doing the, just this version of it, you can think about pressing your knee into your hands or option two, bring ankle to knee. Pause here. Ankle is gonna press into the knee just a bit as you lean forward. Really nice stretch for the piriformis muscle, which is a deep muscle in our hip. Tends to get ornery and cause irritation to the sciatic nerve because they're right next to each other, one right on top of the other. And in some people, it even goes through. The nerve goes through that piriformis muscle in some people. Let's try one more time. Little press of the ankle. Gentle. Doesn't have to be strong. Hinge forward a bit till you feel a little bit of that lengthening sensation in the back of the hip. And then a back to sitting will come. Perfect. Then scoot back in the chair so that your thigh is fully supported keeping the chest lifted, extend the left leg, start to give this ankle a circle around and circle it the other way. Let that side down, extend the other knee and circle, chest still lifted. Notice it's a lot more difficult that way if we kind of slouch back and lean back makes it a bit easier, but more challenge if we sit up tall, circle the other direction. Left that side down one more time. Left knee comes up. Maybe spread your toes apart a little bit as you then circle the ankle around and circle it the other way. Let that side down. Bring the other side up. Spread the toes, even the pinky toe. You may even use your fingers to help that out to give a little space between the toes. Then add circle. And circle. Wrist and ankles have so many small little bones in here, really important to get movement of the joint fluid between each and every one of those joints regularly. Nice, we'll let that side come down and then we'll move into standing. So we're gonna take 
the chair, flip it around, or you can go to a countertop or even a wall for that matter. We're going to have the chair right in front of you, hands resting on the chair. Step back a bit, feet about hip width apart, and we're going to hinge your hips so we keep your neutral spine, this little curve in your lower back. Hinge the hips back into a modified down dog. And allow the ribs to expand in all 360 degrees of direction. And then allow your spine to round, to come back up. Keep maybe a little bit of a plank position if your wrist can tolerate that. Otherwise, just come up to stand, re-hinge, place the hands comfortably onto the chair. Just like with the ankle to knee stretch, we're going to have a little bit of activity of your wrists or your forearms, your hands pressing into your chair. Allow the ribs to expand, round the spine. Make a little bit of a wave movement on the way back up, and then one more time we'll hinge back. Notice the movement of the ribs as you breathe, and then round as we come back up. And then we're going to bring your feet together. Right hand is going to stay on the chair. We're going to lean towards it, so just a straight bend to the side, creating length. Left side of your rib cage is going to reach up away from the bottom pelvis. Continue with this version or option to reach the left arm up overhead into a side bend stretch. Pause here. And then use your side waist to pull yourself back up and then reach up and over. Again, option to leave the arm down if there's any shoulder issues with this. And then bring yourself back up to the center in one more time. And then reach up and over. And then bring it back. Nice. We're going to bring your chair to the other side. Or just turn around. Feet together. Option to bring your feet apart, by the way, if balance is an issue there. Chest lifted, it's a straight side bend, like you're reaching up and over an object on the side of the body. Pause here, or option to add that arm reach. Head is going to stay in line with the rest of the body, so we're going to try to avoid letting your head be floppy. Just keep it nice and part of the, the, part of the movement, so we're creating this big C shape of your entire spine, including the head and the neck. Reach, reach the arm up and over again. As you side bend, we're going to keep that bottom shoulder put facing forward so we don't round and rotate. Reach the arm back up to the sky. Stand with all 10 toes and your heels into the ground. One more time. Notice that contact. Feel the sensation of the earth so that it gives you a little bit of support and balance back up to the center. Good. Then we're going to face the chair, left leg behind you for a little bit of a hip flexor stretch. We'll find a lunge position, all 10 toes forward, and then tuck your tailbone down underneath you just a bit. My back knee is going to bend enough to allow that, that posterior tilt to happen. You should feel a little bit of a pull here in that front of that left hip. Chest lifted high. Stay with that or option then to add again another little side bend. Left arm coming up and then reaching over to the right. Two full rounds of breath here. We'll unwind, step your feet together and try the other side. So all 10 toes forward, little posterior tilt of the pelvis. You should feel a little stretch in the front of that right hip. Pause there or option to reach the right arm up. Keep that length in your lower back as you reach over to the other side. Allow yourself to breathe. and come back to the center. Very nice. I'm going to step your feet together and then one more time finish with one more of these chair down dogs. Hinge the hips back. Take a breath. And round yourself back up. We'll finish in standing. Bring your hands together. Just a quick check of the balance. If you're feeling comfortable, let your arms rest down by your side. Maybe even close your eyes for a moment in standing. That's if you're feeling safe. A little bit of work on proprioception, getting to know where your body's at. Otherwise, keep those eyes open. And then we'll finish by inhaling, either leaving your arms down or option to add a big reach overhead inhale. And exhale, bring your hands to prayer. Fantastic job. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope your body feels a little more mobile, less stiff now. I hope that felt comfortable and good for your body. 
Thanks for joining me and hope to see you another time. Thanks. Yes, so far from rheumatoid arthritis, start practicing these exercises today. Start making these exercises part of your routine. These exercises will help you reduce fatigue, improve your mood, and most importantly, decrease your pain and inflammation. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, don't forget to leave them down below as I and Dr. Melissa Kale will be happy to answer them. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with other people suffering with rheumatoid arthritis. Thank you for watching and have an amazing day. Rheumatologistoncall.com